Good morning. I want to share something with you uh, today about my first encounter with God. You know, I realize a lot of people may click on this video that, that don't believe in God, and they may think that the God uh, belief and faith is, is foolishness, but I would subject you today that really there's only two main schools of thought in our world today. Uh, either there is a God or there isn't a God. Uh, and the theory that, that there isn't a God starts with two giant balls of matter in space that are traveling at a very high rate of speed and they collide and there's this big bang, uh, this explosion. Those, those balls of matter just magically appear in space that magically appeared. They explode and there's this big bang and then all of a sudden um, the earth ends up at a perfect distance from the sun with an atmosphere and a, and a uh, magnetic poles and the existence of water and, and that just happens randomly. And then uh, somehow the elements that showed up on earth uh, on the periodic table and rocks, they over time, millions of years, they, uh, they turn into life. Uh, single-celled organisms but really if you look at that even the most single-celled organisms are extremely complex with their DNA and their chromosomes and when I mean, you look at a flagella for example and it takes uh, a lot of amino acid chains to work together in microbiology and if you think that happened randomly it really takes a lot of faith to believe that and then somehow those things turned into fish and frogs and lizards and um, reptiles and amphibians and then they became birds and mammals and eventually monkeys become people and that's the best theory that, that scientists have outside of God for how the universe came to be. Truly uh, they say the universe is 63 billion light years uh, or something like that in diameter. <clears throat> Man has only gone uh, not even one light year and we claim to have this understanding in all of our science books that that evolution is the answer to how you and I came to be in this world that we know. Well, my friends, I don't believe that. And, and what I wanna share with you today is why. Because rather than just tell you that my faith is based on a, a preacher or a parent's teaching, I wanna tell you about my first encounter with God. And if you'll bear with me, I wanna tell you how you can have an encounter with God too. Um, so my first encounter with God, I was young, about five years old, and uh, my family had gone to visit uh, my dad's side of the family who lived in Clarksburg, West Virginia. And you gotta understand that the, where they lived, it was really steep. And the, the cars parked on the road because there were the driveways would have been too steep. You had to go up steps to get up the front yard and, and the houses were usually two-story with the bottom layer built into the uh, hillside and the, the, the layer that would be the regular floor of the first story was kind of up on the second story. And you could see down the hill, you could see the house, the roof of the house down the hill in the next road that was cut on the side of the mountain. So uh, very steep. In fact, they mowed their yards with weed eaters or maybe a push mower if they tie a rope to it and go up now. So it was really steep. My cousin and I are playing on a swing set. And, uh, and that's why in the video you see a swing set behind me because I want you to know that having, having an encounter with God, you don't have to be in a church. I mean, it helps, but uh, if you're in a Bible-based church with, with believers that have faith, there's a, a greater chance of experiencing and encountering God without a doubt. Uh, but you don't have to have a church building or a, a certain place to have an encounter with God. So my, my cousin and I are swinging and we were both swinging at the same time and, and we came back, which would have been down, down the hill at that point. And we're, we both come back and the swing set comes up off the ground on the front legs and we're about to to literally roll down this hill. You're at that point where you can feel it just, you went over the tipping point. And, and I was young, but I remember it vividly. Uh, the swing set set back down, and what I really remember thinking is not only did the swing set set down, but the, swings, the swing itself, I was sitting still and not moving. And so I stood to my feet and I looked up on the hillside above the trees, and I see three bright white beams uh, that I immediately recognized as, as angels. And so I ran inside and I said, Mom, Mom, come see these angels. But the time she came out there, those angels were gone. But I remember that. And my whole life, I've remembered that. It was my first encounter with God, not my last. But as I tell you about that encounter, I want you to know that, that angels are real. In fact, in the scriptures, you, you hear, uh, you can read Psalm 91, for, the command, for he commands his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Psalm 103 says, praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his, bid his bidding. So angels, angels are real. <clears throat> and I'm not exactly sure why 
uh, I saw angels at that time, but I know that, you know, Jesus said at one time, you know, unless you become like these little children and have faith like a child, you will not enter the, the kingdom of God. So as children, we, we're, we're kind of gullible, but we have faith to believe what people tell us. And I believed uh, some of the, the scriptures that my mom had taught me, and she was a very faith-filled person uh, who was walking by faith and, and walking and, and and, uh, and the calling God had for her. at that time, my parents were, were very devout and experiencing God in their lives. So I think that was part of it, uh, no doubt. Uh, but, but God showed me that. And so my whole life, I've known that God is real. And it took some years. Uh, I wasn't raised in church, so it took some life lessons. And I, my path was not always straight by any means. And uh, if you knew me when I was younger, probably you, you would, wouldn't even know I was a Christian. Uh, and then sadly, that's the case of many, many people today. Uh, just kind of live normal. I and mean, most of my prayer life was about uh, God help me catch a big fish or do good in a baseball game or something like that. Uh, I prayed to God when I needed him, but not necessarily had a relationship all the time. So I want to tell you, so that was my first encounter with God. I want to tell you how you can have an encounter with God according to a couple of scriptures. I'm going to share two scriptures with you. And the first is from John 14:21. Uh, Jesus says this, the person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me and whoever loves me will be loved by my, by my father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Also another translation, I will make myself real to him. I will manifest myself to him. So God desires for you to have an encounter with him and, and it says, what do we do? It says, if you, if you love me, if you follow my commandments, if you follow Jesus uh, and, you, and you take that leap of faith, uh, to believe in him then he makes himself real to you you know I've talked with some who don't believe in God and and to me the analogy it's like there, there there's a man and you're standing on the side of a hill and on the other side of that hill there's a river a river of life but you want to stay on that side of the hill and claim that there is no river over there but you're not willing to go up and over the hill and what do I mean by that to go up and over the hill you have to you have to come like a child in faith and, and you have to humble yourself before God. You know, the Bible says we're all sinners and the wages of sin is death. All fall short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death, which means that by God's standards, we're not, uh, we're not right. We have to come to him in humility and forgiveness and we have to come genuinely. You have to confess with your mouth, but you also have to believe in your heart. You have to make a decision to, uh, to follow Jesus. And I know it sounds like foolishness to think that this this man who lived 2,000 years ago and died on a cross named Jesus uh, could change your life or change the world, and that's just a man in history. But I'm telling you, he wasn't just a man. He was a man, but he was also fully God. Some of the disciples were there with Jesus, and Jesus asked him, he said, who do people say I am? And uh, they answered, you know, some said Elijah, some said a teacher. And Peter stood up and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And that's the truth. Jesus was the Messiah. He was the Christ. And just as he died on the cross, he rose again on the third day. And he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. But God, the Holy Spirit, is still here on the earth with us. Because it's God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He's the only door. And he's not just a man, he's fully God. And it really boils down to what you do with God. An encounter with God starts with what you do with Jesus. Even some of the Pharisees at the time uh, were listening to Jesus, the, the religious teachers, and, and they said, do you think you're greater than our father Abraham? And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was, I am. And that's powerful, you see, that name, I am, they knew it. That was the same I am God that God appeared to Moses as the burning bush that led the Israelites out of captivity from Egypt. So they knew I am that I am is that same God. And Jesus claimed to be God, and he proved it when he not only died on the cross, but he rose again on the third day. So an encounter with God starts with what you do with Jesus. So next thing I want, the other scripture I want to show you, I want to go all, all the way back to Daniel chapter 10. So in Daniel 10, oh, and I got my stuff here, I'm going to move that out of the way. In Daniel 10, it, it says, uh, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. So Daniel had set, him, set, his, set himself up to hear from God and to gain understanding. So this is for some of you, maybe you uh, already have some, some form of a religion, but you, or, or maybe you even go to a church, but you've not had a genuine encounter with God. It's more of a, a practice than it is a genuine relationship. And that's what I want to share with through this scripture. And, uh, 
So let's speed on down to verse 12 in chapter 10. And he said, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel. This is the angel. An angel appeared to Daniel. He says, do, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel. From the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. It goes on down and says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. This encourages me because I realize that from the day Daniel humbled himself and set his mind to, and his heart to hear from God, the Lord sent an angel for an encounter for Daniel to give him understanding. And what I, what I, what we can glean through that is this, is that if we set ourselves, if we humble ourselves before God and we pursue him, then we can have a genuine encounter with him. And it doesn't just, it's not just one encounter, it's encounter after encounter through our lives as we walk, not just in a religion, but in a relationship with Christ, through prayer, through reading the word, and through spending time with Jesus and the, and the relationship that you can have with the Holy Spirit who dwells in us when we come to God in faith. You know, it's God's will that none should perish, but that all would come to know him, but he knows that some won't. So what it really boils down to is that decision about what you're gonna do with Jesus. Do you believe he was the Christ and the Messiah? Are you willing to try that uh, and, and in faith, take a leap of faith and say, I know it sounds like foolishness, but it's really no more foolishness than this theory of evolution that, that starts with two giant balls of matter magically in space. I'm telling you, my friends, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, what evolved first? Was it the honeybee and the butterfly or the flowering plants? They had to come together at the same time in order for flowering plants to reproduce. They had to have pollinators. The, the odds of those things happening when you look at the math and the evolution, it takes more faith to believe in that concept than it does to believe in God. And I, I just believe that, that God would have me share this with you today. Uh, so that you might understand that God pursues you. It says, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and whoever would invite me in, I would come and make my home with them. God is, is calling out to you today if you don't know him, and if you do know him, he's calling you to, to a deeper and more fulfilled relationship with him. The thing is that analogy about going over the hill, what I would say is this, some people don't wanna go there because they love their lifestyle. They want to live the life that they, they have in themselves. They, they like their life and the, the things they have, and they think that they'd be given up too much to go there. Uh, but the reality is the joy that we have in Christ, the peace that surpasses all understanding, the love and the purpose uh, that we find in living for Christ, the hope and the assurance that when we die, we'll be in heaven with Jesus. For to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord for the believer but not so for the unbeliever because not only God, God is a God of love, he's a God of, of goodness and mercy. His mercy is new every morning, his grace is sufficient, but I'm telling you, he's also a God of judgment and justice. Because he is good, he must punish sin. And that's why it starts with humility. You've got to humble yourself, realize you don't have it all figured out and say, you know what, I am a sinner. I can't live up to God's standards and I need what Jesus did for me on the cross because what he did is he paid the price for your sin so that you could have a relationship with him. It says the veil was torn so that now when you pray, you can come directly to God wherever you are. So whether it's on a playground or whether it's in a church building when they open back up, I, I would just encourage you, my friends, don't wait. Seek the Lord now while he can be found. For, you know, it says the day, the day is here, the day is now, but the night comes when no man can work. Let us work while it's day. Let us seek the Lord while we still have breath in our lungs. Because I'm telling you, my friends, just as I've seen the angels of the Lord and I have experienced encounter after encounter with God, he's real. And he's calling out to everyone in these days who, who will come to him. And he's there with open arms saying, I love you. I created you. I have a plan for your life. And, and that is as foolish as that may sound, if you'll step out in faith, my friend, I believe you, you can go over that hill and you can be in that river of life. So thank you for joining me. That's what I have to share to you today. And I encourage you, if you're a believer, uh, share your testimony. Share, share one of your stories and your encounters with God because we're all encouraged by that. Share it in the comments in this video. Make your own video and, and tag me th that I, so that I can watch it and be encouraged. But I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you later.